Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you've got a big smile on your face and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and break down a 1 to 100 risk to reward ratio trade with screenshots before and after. In the process, we're also going to be speaking about Wyckoff distribution versus reaccumulation. A lot of you have been asking about how can you tell the differences between a distribution and a reaccumulation. We're going to speak about that in depth today, how to identify manipulation in the market whether those be trend line manipulations or support or resistance and how to use those manipulations for our entry confirmations it's quite difficult to believe that risk to reward ratios higher than even 1 to 20s 1 to 30s let alone 1 to 100s 1 to 500s or higher is actually possible but if you have been seeing the content that we've been putting out alongside of a lot of other people who are studying these concepts on a day-to-day -day basis then you know it's actually possible to reach consistency with these type of risk to rewards so hopefully this video today is going to help you a lot in terms of being being able to identify the differences between a distribution and a reaccumulation and hopefully be able to use this analysis in your own time for your own trades. One thing that I'll say before we start the breakdown of this pair is I'm going to be speaking about many different accumulations and distributions and reaccumulations in the same picture. In reality, you don't need to identify every single one of them before you take a trade. I'm just showing you the market behavior as well as breaking down a trade scenario. So don't take it the wrong way. It doesn't mean that you need to identify every single thing that I'm talking about in this video. We're just going to look at market behavior as well as a trade scenario alongside of the market behavior. Initially, this started from the four hour picture that GBP JPY is looking like it's distributing. And this is where the first screenshot comes into play. Today is Tuesday, November the 10th at just around midnight UK time. So practically 11th of November. This picture was taken on November the 3rd. So about a week ago, initially on the four hour time frame, we were looking looking at a potential distribution for pound versus Japanese yen. Your typical distribution schematic from that preliminary supply to the bias climax all the way down here as your sign of weakness. I can see that that's a sign of weakness because it has reached below the previous low. Following that, the UT and the UTAD. So the up thrust and up thrust after distribution in general, a manipulation of the highs and a break of structure to the downside. So this looked like a perfect distribution with that being the last point of supply being created there before this market reached lower. So the idea behind it was we can wait for an hourly manipulation of the trend line and once the market reaches higher we can look for some potential lower time frame distributions and look to sell it to the downside that's initially what we were looking at just before this market started to approach the trend line it started to accumulate and everything changed with seeing this accumulation right before approaching the desired level there's two different ways of looking at this one way is maybe you looked at this the wrong way this was initially a reaccumulation and you just marked it up the wrong way what i'm trying to show here is whether you identified the wrong way whether you mark it up the wrong way whether you have the correct highs or lows and ut and utad and bias climax everything just comes down to where is the market slowing down at and where is the market moving towards where is the market likely to manipulate and what's happening just before that and this is exactly the picture that was created on the hourly time frame so lower time frame accumulation that's what i speak about in this picture and the trend line manipulation expecting this market to now reach higher to take more positions there were a lot of people who were looking to sell it based on this trend line let's say the the third or the fourth touch of this trend line and a lot of these people would have their stop losses above as they're looking to sell it to the downside so this market needs to now reach above to take all of their stops just before this market reaching that trend line this is the accumulation picture that it started to create sellers climax automatic rally secondary test sign of strength secondary test in phase B, spring, a break of structure to the upside. So again, a manipulation of the lows and a break of structure to the upside. I'm not going to speak about that a lot because we literally broke that down in many of the other videos. But once we broke that structure to the upside, just before this market started to have a stronger rally, it again went silent. It went sideways, started to consolidate in a very small area. We always speak about these areas, that these are some of the very strong supply or demand areas. A lot of people ask, how do you identify identify supply and how do you identify demand this is what a supply and demand is and this has many different names some people would look at it as a rally base rally formation where the market has initially rallied created a base and this is where the market has gone sideways in with not much movement not not much happening before continuing that rally higher some other people would look at this as a reaccumulation so the market has now had a markup is reaccumulating within this range and a continuation of that markup some other people would look at this as an instant institutional candle on a higher time frame so if i look at that under eight hour time frame for example that's now an institutional candle literally an institutional candle in the middle of the range the bottom line is 
whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at that level, it's a zone of demand. This is where this market started to accumulate positions before going higher, making that level a zone of demand. We left some equal lows over here before moving higher and we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, the expectation was for this market to come back down to that zone of demand and that's where we'd be looking to buy it to the upside. It didn't end up happening there and then, it started to reach a little bit higher, but eventually we come back and we reach that level, the same level that was identified previously, but that rally base rally or that area of demand whatever you want to call it and what's quite interesting is how the market behaves when it comes into that zone again not only it reaches below and manipulates the previous lows that we spoke about those equal lows that were created and the liquidity below it is the same picture but it starts to accumulate again now i don't even need to speak about this accumulation we don't even need to go on the lower time frames and mark it up and so on and so forth do you know why because that's a waste of time i know that's an accumulation based on how the market has reacted straight after it because it has had a rally that has broken above multiple structure points has already manipulated previous lows and has broken multiple structure points to the upside making that a very valid zone of accumulation now we have all the confirmations necessary to look for trades the market is in the right direction has approached your zone of demand has accumulated at that zone of demand has broken structure after that so let's look for some entries what's funny to see is on multiple different occasions you'll be given entry opportunities on multiple different time frames on many different scenarios that you look at it you will be able to find many different entry opportunities we went from a four our initial distribution that later we found that is potentially a reaccumulation to then looking at that hourly accumulation before we manipulated the trend line then looking at that hourly zone coming back into that zone a 15 minute accumulation within that zone moving higher and finally a 15 minute well actually not finally <laughs> and a 15 minute reaccumulation forming right above our zone of demand Perfect. And this is a typical markup of your reaccumulation. Preliminary supply, bias climax, all the way down there for the shakeout. Again, that can be your sign of weakness reaching below that wick. Automatic rally back up. This is a rally to test the previous highs, tap into those previous minor areas of supply, move down spring. A final manipulation of all the lows. Again, it's still not confirmed that it's a reaccumulation. The structure looks great because we have manipulated the lows. But once we started to break structure points to the upside, got a little bit more confirmed that we can potentially be looking at a reaccumulation for this to go higher. There weren't many other options. This market were either going to come down to here to mitigate these institutional candles. That's one scenario. Or it would have reached, for example, somewhere here before going higher as an area of demand or maybe filling in this imbalance. There weren't many other options. So even if I wanted to look at other trade opportunities apart from this one that we're going to speak about shortly, just remember that it would have been down here. So we would have waited and we would have again executed based on what we would have seen. Now let's break this down. We saw the reaccumulation. We saw that breaker structure the reaccumulation and this is where we can go now to the five minute time frame to see where we can look for entries this is where the final picture comes in what i'm trying to show here is when the market manipulated these lows created the lows manipulated them it had a strong rally to the upside came back down and literally printed the exact same behavior on the chart that's again screaming saying hey i've created lows i've created liquidity manipulated the lows and went higher I'm doing the same thing. I'm manipulating the lows. Chances are it's going to visit higher. November the 7th, the final thing that made this trade more confirmed is when you looked at that picture on the one minute time frame, you could identify another accumulation. Preliminary supply, seller's climax, automatic rally, secondary test, sign of strength, secondary test in phase B, that's another sign of strength and your spring to the downside. Just to quickly recap, that's a one minute accumulation, which is gonna be the trade that we are gonna be taking within this five minute or 15 minute reaccumulation resulted from this accumulation, from that zone of demand within that initial accumulation. All of that took place after the higher time Time frame distribution or quote unquote distribution. Now we know that that's a reaccumulation. So, what I'm trying to say is it's not always about telling the differences between a distribution and a reaccumulation, it's about trading what you see. I don't need to be able to identify the exact differences between a distribution and a reaccumulation if I can see the trades this way, if I can just go based on what the markets are showing me. Let's go back down to the 15 minute time frame and let this trade play out. Let's have a final look at this. Entry is based on the final institutional candle that manipulated these lows. So open price and the 50%, the stops at that low, which is 730. 135.730 then the entry is the 50 percent which was the entry that got satisfied was 135.769 and that's the entry that's over there 
Now I'm going to speak a little bit about time and price as well because this trade actually came to fruition outside of the normal trading hours. It only came to fruition half an hour after market open, which is not normally where I would like to take this trade. But in this specific case, based on the risk to reward ratio, which I'll speak about where we were targeting on the higher time frames, I was willing to take that risk on board. Also, when you're looking at small stop losses, this is not too small a stop losses for pips. Well, I mean, it is small, but we have had smaller stop losses. This really does depend on your broker, whether you have a true ECN raw spread or a standard account it really does depend on your broker so you have to take into account the spreads because that will most definitely shift your risk to reward and therefore your actual risk and the lot sizes that you want to execute on that trade as well so that's quite important so this is it now it's ready as i mentioned earlier you don't need to have found everything for this to lead to this trade but it's quite nice to see how the market reacts it's quite nice to be able to understand the exact market behavior and be able to make sense of all of this madness that's going on you don't need all of that to execute the trade having a look at this picture a simple manipulation of the lows and a breaker structure to the upside was enough or having a look at that five minute accumulation but looking at the bigger picture also helped us to see where we can potentially target this is where the daily time frame will come into play because we're looking at potentially a very big reaccumulation in the market then we can expect this is going to reach a lot higher so looking at the weekly time frame this is the weekly imbalance that's that zone of insufficient price action where we can expect this to be fielding completely all the way to the top so that can be a potential target at 140.118 which brings this to a 1 to 111 risk to reward ratio it hasn't reached there yet on the five minute let's actually go to the 15 minutes and play this this came to fruition 50 percent the market started to go higher and higher and higher from there. Uh, it's actually interesting. Let me speak about this quickly as well, because we were looking at some other trade scenarios in the middle as well, some re-entries, and it was the same idea. A trend line might have been this trend line, manipulation of that trend line. And in this specific example, I was hoping for this market to reach this institutional candle. That's where I was hoping to actually go ahead and enter this. That never happened. So it's not always every single markup that we have will come into fruition. In reality, when we are looking at such high risk rewards we don't really need to be executing so many trades so going back to the 15 minutes just letting this play out this is now a time span of just under two days now so it's phenomenal to see that these opportunities are real in the market you can actually achieve these type of entries these type of stop losses and these type of risk to rewards obviously not all of the positions will be kept open until the final tp i spoke about this in the q a video as well a lot of partials will be closed along the way and those minor positions that would be left open would not only be broken even but the stop loss would be in profit those would be some scenarios that i would be willing to just trail my stop loss but i would most definitely take majority of the positions off the table and secure the money remember it's about capital preservation i want to take my risk off the table as soon as possible but that's everything i personally wanted to speak about i hope this video made it a little bit more clear to be able to read market behavior and use every piece of information and highs and the lows that you get as information for you to be able to pull off trades like this believe me when i say it's more than possible for everyone to get to these type of risk reward ratio just be consistent with your education and remember about project 500 hours it'd be great to know what you think about these type of videos in the comment section down below and if you want more breakdowns like this if you want more trade scenarios like this i've got a couple other breakdowns like this that i can record videos on press the like button if you want more content like this if you think this is going to be helpful to your growth as a trader and i'll most definitely make sure to post more content if you're new to the channel make sure to press the subscribe button welcome to the family welcome to our community but with that being said let's continue to elevate and let's catch these pips